so that uh, we can have uh, it for the people who are not uh, using it. Well, again, uh, thank you for coming in. And uh, like I said, this is uh, the last tutorial before uh, you submit your assessment items and the next tutorial would be after them. So I'm, we are talking about uh, the uh, different assessment items. Anyway, so yeah, so uh, so that is why we reduce that to four uh, cases in the portfolio. And again, we felt that it did not really, and, and you know, it was difficult to mark as well. Because, okay, we thought that uh, how do we mark four portfolios? Do we mark them all and then get the average and, and have an average mark? Which makes more sense because we want you to be proficient across uh, different uh, areas, uh, different topics. So if you're good in one and bad in another, you average out. Or uh, do we uh, give the best uh, mark? So now this year, uh, we have uh, uh, sort of thought that uh, I think the be better view, uh, way of doing that is let you produce one good uh, case. You can submit up to four uh, and we pick the best one and the one which, which you get the best marks is your mark uh, so that it, it represents your actual best effort. Um, and and uh, we are going to change uh, the assessment uh, uh, totally uh, next uh, year, 2020, because that would be, uh, you know, three consecutive years and that would be the fourth year. And uh, as university, um, um, we say that all the assessment items need to uh, change by at least 80% uh, every uh, three years. Uh, so, you know, the course needs, uh, gets a revision, uh, a major revision. So what we are going to do now is uh, we'll have two assessment items. One would be a written assessment, uh, which is the, the one you are doing, the, the bigger one uh, with the latest technology. Because case reports, you've done a lot. Yes. You've done yes. it many uh, units, undergrad, postgrad, everywhere. And they don't really, um, uh, you know, um, uh, are very useful in assessing um, your uh, uh, sort of capabilities. Uh, so, but, but the other one with new technologies is rather interesting because then uh, you can uh, sort of like e examine uh, the, the child or the patient as an individual or as a uh, uh, pathology group and then attack it from very many ways not just the sonography not just the ultrasound uh, but uh, and whatever is in ultrasound something which is happening which is new uh, which would then uh, enhance your um, like many of you haven't studied pediatrics probably since uh, you graduated and there's so much new stuff uh, yeah. happen out there so um, you know in, at a master's level that would give you an incentive to keep current uh, what's happening in the world right now and what is under investigation and what is coming uh, maybe in two years or three years or ten years time yeah. what are the experimental things going on at the moment so uh, we will keep that and we will get rid of the portfolio and the cases and we'll have uh, the case, uh, uh, the online quiz uh, as uh, a 50% of the mark. Mm -hmm. So all these um, um, quiz uh, cases you have done up till now, I haven't posted the uh, case of the week for, um, for the current week, uh, week nine, the MSK one. Um, um, and I will uh, do it tonight as well. I have the case uh, up there, but I just was uh, too busy with the uh, residential schools and, and uh, I have to go to Brisbane for a residential school on Saturday. So I'll be working the um, weekend as well. So I didn't uh, find time, but that is not an excuse. I should have uh, done that, but I would do it uh, tonight, uh, definitely. And also Dr. Aziz, the quiz answer for the spine, um, was that week, yeah, we, we didn't uh, discuss that, so we were going to discuss it tonight.
so we will discuss the spine we will discuss the brain although i have uh, they, i have not put a quiz uh, yes. uh, to the brain but we will talk about uh, uh, the germinal matrix hemorrhage uh, gmh uh, anyway um, and uh, then i will uh, put the quiz on as well so those uh, 10 quizzes uh, or 10 cases and five questions each 50 questions uh, we will have a question bank Uh, obviously i won't uh, have the same ones uh, <laughs> for the uh, written exam as well i will have to come up with new questions or uh, uh, you know change them in a certain way uh, and then add uh, some small uh, you know a short answer uh, ones and uh, other modalities than just mcqs Uh, mm -hmm. as well so i mean there's a scientific way of uh, making uh, online um, uh, online tests so it would be 50% online test and 50% uh, for the written assessment so we will we are going to change it uh, in 2020 uh, mm -hmm. in that way but for you guys uh, we don't have uh, the online quiz at the moment uh, they are there for you to uh, assess yourself Uh, i hope those uh, um cases uh, made you at least um uh, study one uh, pathology uh, a week uh, pertaining to the topic um so that would uh, put everything in clinical context mm -hmm. um, uh, that you are studying and i usually put the most commonly uh, encountered um abnormality as a as a case mm -hmm. um like you know you you would read a lot about uh, um uh, you know when you're doing the um a sp for example spinal um and you are talking uh, you know reading a lot about meningocele and myelomeningocele and then those things but uh uh um, um an epidermoid sinus or or um 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 or um a communicating sinus is 100 times more common than a meningocele clinically mm -hmm. uh so uh, you know that is a common thing um compared yeah. to a meningocele meningocele is more interesting and and, and what not but you will come across a a meningocele or myelomeningocele maybe once in two three months if you are in a dedicated pediatric unit but if you are in a general ultrasound unit maybe once a year yeah. uh, whereas skin dimple and a tract leading and a sinus you see almost one a week or or maybe one a month definitely um so that is much a lot more common Dr. Aziz, can yeah. I please ask you? You know the difference between the first and the second assignment. So my first assignment was the pancreas hydatidosis, and the second one is the new technology which I decided on. Um, you know, elastography. But yeah. the way the the uh, assignment. is um written the second one i notice in the rubric or not in the rubric but um in your it says unstructured um abstract, abstract. Yeah. yeah so is that the introduction no no abstract is uh, before the introduction abstract <laughs> summarizes all uh, your uh, paper and everything uh, so abstract will be um um that um um you're doing on elastography so you can say elastography is a new technique uh, used in um, assessing the various uh, uh, is a new technique in ultrasound uh, there are various uh, uh, ways uh, to do the elastography uh, and uh, tissue tensile elastography or, or whatever is the most common uh, it is used in uh, evaluating pediatric patients as well so there's two little lines which is taken from introduction and then you're saying uh, um uh, this um 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 submission or this assignment or this uh, uh, paper is about um uh, a 5 year old um um uh, you know a male baby uh, with uh, abdominal pain but <coughs> me Didn't even see a sneeze there. <laughs> yeah, uh, which uh, presented uh, a very fun thing, and um, 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 on conventional imaging, it was suspected that he had uh, 
uh, Crohn's disease. Um, elastography uh, was applied, which showed blah, blah, blah. Uh, changes, hence, elastography is proven to be uh, a good uh, new technique in, in evaluating or management of patients with uh, Crohn's disease. So that is your abstract. So abstract. And then you next. Then. And then you say. In introduction or, or uh, you know, basically you don't put an introduction there. You have, uh, after that, uh, you have uh, uh, the patient. Um, or so your case patient. presentation. Yeah. The, the abstract is completely separate. Yeah. It's yeah. not part of your work as well. It's, it's like it's the sort of thing they might put in a journal when you look up, you know, how they always have the abstract and something. Yeah. Oh, yes. and is that part of my word document that I um, uh, um, I write up and that I send in, I uh, submit? Is that my first page of my word document? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, so so it's abstract, abstract on a on a different page than when I start my presentation, my case. Yeah, presentation. it doesn't matter if you want to put it on different pages or uh, you want to put it uh, them on the same uh, sort of page. Uh, you know different paragraphs uh, you can put a head heading abstract and then uh, second heading would be clinical presentation and then count in the word count either. investigations and then uh, the ultrasound technique you be uh, okay. normal ultrasound and then uh, your diagnosis and differential diagnosis okay. uh, and uh, um, further management and further management you say uh, elastography and then you say that uh, what was done in this particular patient and what were the uh, findings on elastography. And then you start a couple of paragraphs about Crohn's disease that, uh, or, or whatever you are uh, using. Uh, Crohn's disease is yeah. rare and blah, blah, blah. And uh, what is the pathology? And then you are writing about, uh, mostly about elastography. Okay. That elastography is a new technique which does this, 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 uh, and uh, uh, in Crohn's, um, uh, what is the physics behind it? How okay. it uh, helps in Crohn's disease? And there you uh, write all the uh, references that uh, this person did um, elastography in Crohn's and then found this thing, and this person did this thing, and then. You know, there is uh, evidence from literature that uh, it is a useful uh, okay. thing to do. Yeah. Thank so you. This is how you structure your um, 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 uh, thing. But then again, you see, I am not uh, going to, um, uh, how do you say, um, uh, deduct your marks if you are not following exactly the same structure. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you have the rubric and you have everything done in that. You have an abstract there. Uh, if you don't utilize an abstract, obviously you don't get the marks for the abstract on the uh, thing. Uh, but it is not binding down that you must uh, have exactly uh, follow a certain pattern. Okay. Um, yeah, as long as you have included everything uh, in, in the uh, abstract. Uh, in the uh, rubric we, okay. you have. Dr. Aziz, so my first one is due on Monday. So if I finish my second one, let's say by the weekend, can I still send that through a week before? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just for yeah. you to give some feedback before I uh, put yeah. it. Yeah, uh, yeah. This one uh, portfolio is uh, due on uh, uh, on Monday uh, by five pm. Um, so you have the whole uh, weekend uh, to work on that. If you are submitting one case report or if you are uh, submitting four, just stick to the fifteen hundred word limit, please. Um, and that is there so that you don't start writing long. Yes. On because you know you can start writing and then there is no stopping you uh, yes. at all. And the second one is next week. So if you uh, uh, you know work on your portfolio, submit that by Monday, yes. and then uh, on Tuesday if you uh, send me uh, the uh, for the feedback and okay. written assessment, then I can get it back to you by Wednesday, and then you again will have. Three, four days to refine that Thank and uh, send it back. Thank you.
So, yeah, so you have uh, got a bit of time uh, to do it yeah. um, um, at the moment. Right, so let's talk about this uh, last case. Um, if you would look at the main image, you can see that uh, there is uh, this um, uh, tubular structure of, uh, obviously it's a long uh, image of uh, uh, the spinal cord and the yellow arrows point to this little uh, uh, sort of um, um, thing. Or, or a structure that is um, going inferiorly, which should not be there. Okay, so that is a, uh, a septation or a, a filament that causes uh, the, um, the uh, tethering of the cord. The, if you look at uh, all these uh, other images, uh, for example, the... What's that? Who's that? Hello. Hello? No, I Can don't you hear me? I, uh, I can't see anything other than your picture. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, just now. You lost you for a bit. Yeah, oh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, just now. You lost you for a bit. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, just now. You lost you for a bit. Oh, I don't know where uh, uh, that. Um, uh, I heard music. Oh. Yeah, I could hear that as well when I was what, like. What, what, sort, what sort of music? Yeah, somebody was singing. Oh, it's probably, <laughs> I think it's my, da my daughter singing in the background. Oh, it must be her. She's, she's, <laughs> she's that, that was, I thought it was some professional singing. Oh, well, she's, she's, in, she's got a lead role in a play. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. No wonder she, is, uh, she sings. Really well. <laughs> she's yeah. caught in the elephant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, so these uh, images, especially this 4-14 image, if you look at that, now, it shows Dr. You. Sorry, I can't see. All I've got is your picture. How do I? Change? Yeah, no, no, in, on 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 your own because I or or I can hold on. I can um, uh, share my screen with you. That, oh, is that what you meant? Sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine. I will share my screen with you. I wasn't sure if I was the only one seeing it this way. Yeah. Okay. Can you see this? Yes. yes. Yeah, so this is the key image, basically. It's a transverse image, um, and uh, this is uh, at, the, at where this um, um, superficial dimple and uh, this little uh, tuft of hair and discoloration on the skin is. And if you see, there is this tortuous tract that is coming down and leading into the uh, sacral uh, spine. Okay. So this is basically a track that is uh, going down and uh, this is what we call uh, 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 an epithelial or a, or a fistula or a sinus. Fistula by definition is which a track that uh, joins two epithelial lined surfaces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in, in the uh, spinal cord you have the ependyma and on the skin, you have the squamous stratified epithelium. So these are both of them um, ectodermal uh, tissues. Uh, so they, um, they when on, in the development, they stick together. And they don't separate uh, from each other. And when the baby grows, uh, the, parent, the mesenchyme grows around it. But then this uh, uh, stickiness elongates. Um, and becomes a tortuous tract. The, um, uh, there are two um, uh, side effects of that. One is that uh, there is a phylum uh, at the cordae equina that may get attached to it and that kind of pulls down on the uh, spinal cord and does not let it ascend normally and that is called tethering of the cord. Mm. And that can then uh, cause uh, your, uh, especially your sacral and lumbar sacral nerves uh, to be uh, compressed. And that causes spasticity in the lower limbs from birth. Mm. Uh, and uh, parents note that, um, uh, you know, in a, in a newborn who has got these funny uh, postures of his, its legs and they are not, uh, the baby is not moving their legs as it should be. So that is one thing. The other thing is that because it is 
uh, uh, communication from skin all the way down into the spinal cord, uh, infection can um, travel uh, up this tract and cause uh, um, all these, uh, uh, you know, uh, myelitis and meningitis and then uh, abscess formation or collections at the uh, terminal end of uh, the spinal cord. So it's easy to manage. They basically just uh, uh, make a small incision and, and then uh, just divide this um, uh, tract. Uh, and uh, if there is any um, uh, tethering, they just, uh, uh, you know, cut, cut it off. And uh, uh, usually, if it is done early, before six months of age, uh, there is a lot uh, of improvement of uh, motor function to the lower limbs. And whatever is left is, uh, um, uh, you know, when the child grows, uh, it can be managed by, um, uh, by physiotherapy and by, um, um, you know, assistance uh, with that. Mm. Um, and that was one of the uh, images and uh, another image that uh, shows it much clearly is um, uh, the uh, MRI. Let me share that with you. Um, uh, this one here. Um, oh, that's the same image, sorry. Um, uh, this one here. Okay, so same thing, uh, but MR. So you can see uh, the track very clearly going in. There's a gap uh, in the um, uh, posterior um, uh, element of the sacral vertebra, and it uh, then uh, is communicating with the spinal canal inside. Okay, so that is um, what is uh, uh, very typical of uh, these uh, um, um, uh, tracts. Um, if you look at uh, the quiz um, and uh, the answers to that, uh, the first one, which of the following is the main cause of dorsal dermal sinus? We call that a dorsal dermal sinus. It is um, called by